position in terms of really putting your experiences and increasing your visibility, which saw actually the establishment of the Sudan Africa Regional Chapter, which is equally, as we speak, moderating the forums um, on the chapter. Um, we are going to hear from a lot of you in terms of uh, the work that you've done, but more importantly, hearing from you the results and the impact that these grants have had in the work that in, in, in the past couple of months. Um, moving forward, once this webinar is done, we would be producing an e-publication or at least a paper that would document and really keep a record of what has been done and how do we as civil society organizations, as the council bows out, how do we take it forward? Um, again, this funding has been extremely critical to ensure that we all grow up. And I feel we have grown up. I feel we have been strengthened. We have been given the opportunities and we have been given the space to ensure that civil society organizations do the work that we do on the continent and beyond. A uh, few housekeeping uh, issues. Uh, I think Eloise has been saying it quite a bit, but let me just repeat, please choose your language setting and just remain with that particular language setting. So ladies, and for the presenters, kindly say next so that Eloise can go ahead and move the slides as we uh, move along. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Caridwin Johnson of WSSCC for some of the opening remarks. Caridwin, over to you. Hi, thank you very much, Sareen. Uh, real pleasure to be here um, today. And um, also, you know, it's really, really great to hear um, that and you um, appreciates all this work and that you're really ready to sort of take up the baton, uh, carry it on, um, and also, you know, to keep the learning going. So I just wanted to, to just say a few words to set the scene. Uh, really, so um, just to explain to those of you who don't know, really, how do we get here? Why did WSCC, sorry, the council um, engage in this activity uh, with Sanitation and Water for All um, and national partners? So um, WSCC, sorry, Liz, I'm, I'm going to start saying the council. <laughs> the council and SWA, uh, known by many as SWA also, uh, we have a, a long and positive history um, and recently we've really joined forces um, to engage around the SWA Mutual Accountability Me Mechanism known as the MAM. And actually, as a partner of SWA, the Council made a commitment to support the MAM in the 2019 finance, oh, sorry, sector ministers meeting. Uh, we actually committed to support the sector strengthening in a number of countries this year in 2020. And so our support really stemmed from that commitment, as well as I think the belief in collaboration, that the belief that WSSCC held also in supporting um, multi-stakeholder engagement uh, in sector dialogue. So of course, government, private sector, uh, development partners, but also that critical role that civil society has uh, which is often very, very lacking. Um, so this year we, we, we were working very closely with the Secretariat of SWA and national partners uh, on short-term catalytic funding, which would really give a boost in some countries to sector coordination, specifically uh, engaging all these stakeholders and looking at the various mechanisms um, that planning, reporting, uh, review mechanisms in the sector such as the joint sector reviews or national sanitation conferences and making sure that there was meaningful engagement of civil society and the voices of those left behind was brought into those various processes. So these grants in the main four grants we'll talk about um, and we'll hear from the grantees uh, have been in the main about um, supporting meaningful civil, civil society engagement funding for uh, advocacy and capacity building, which I think we know is has generally been very, very underfunded in the WASH sector. Um, and so these grants have been about enabling civil society to honour their SWA commitments and contribute meaningfully to sector dialogue. So when we hear from the grantees, uh, I think they'll also talk just a little bit about what their civil society commitment was and how these grants enabled them uh, to honour those. Um, so we've been working with a number of civil society networks to develop 
activities. As I say, they've been really quite short term catalytic funding to build capacity and enable them to bring in the voices of vulnerable populations into sector dialogue. So today you will hear from uh, presentations from four countries, um, mainly from civil society, but we also did fund uh, in Malawi, the Ministry of Irrigation and Water Development, really to, to, to support them to plan much more effective joint sector reviews that in partnership with civil society would be able to bring in the voices of those left behind and data, evidence and information uh, from what's really happening at regional and district level, um, because actually we've supported district, regional joint sector reviews, as well as an upcoming joint sector review, a national joint sector review that hasn't yet taken place, but uh, that's the culmination of all this work. Uh, in Tanzania, you'll hear from uh, the National Network to Asnet, um, a, a number of studies they've conducted, one on uh, finance in the sector and looking at where the disparities are in investment, and also a look at healthcare facilities and what is the investment like there. Uh, and the recommendations that have come from this study uh, have already been used, for example, to influence the finance minister's meeting. They'll be brought into the National Sanitation Conference, which is later this month. And they'll also use them into next year, looking at how they can influence uh, the new cabinet that will, will be put into place uh, early next year and they'll use those recommendations to bring to lobby meetings with uh, government officials. Um, so, you know, some really good work there. And in, in addition, they've been able to reach people with disabilities uh, with COVID-19 prevention support over the summer as well. In Kenya, our partners have been co-convening the Minister of Health and the Minister of Finance really trying to improve coordination there and to establish a national sanitation steering committee that uh, cuts across the, the ministries. Uh, further, the, the national civil society network, COASnet, have been developing and testing out a social, about, social accountability tool um, and really engaging youth on that and bringing the youth into national policy debates. And finally, Nigeria, the support has been very much about the, the state chapter so really strengthening the the civil society network Nusan at state level uh, I think in seven state chapters we'll hear from them about how they've been really uh, strengthening advocacy capacity uh, and again being more inclusive and being more diverse and bringing in um, people from different, um, different non-wash actors uh, people from vulnerable populations into the dialogue people with disabilities etc um, so I think, again, that's been a really interesting project. Now, the reason why I've summarised those, those um, hopefully just to give you a flavour of the support is because when we hear from um, the presenters, they're not going to tell you about the activities. They're going to zoom straight into the impact. What have they achieved? Uh, what have they learned? And what are their recommendations for the future? So that's just to give you a little flavour of the type of support that we've been offering and, and the type of work that we've been doing with these various uh, partners in country level and, the, and new members. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to be working on this, I have to say. I've, I've really, really enjoyed working with all the partners, but I think the thing that we really want to underline today is that this work's unfinished. I think uh, you're all aware that the council is closing. Uh, we're transitioning to the Sanitation and Hygiene Fund um, but, you know, for now, one of the things we really want to explore is how can we continue this work? How can we build on gains made? How can this sort of work continue to be supportive? Because we know that it's actually going to be critical if we're going to meet SDG 6.2. So that's kind of to open the debate for later. Liz, uh, our moderator, will, I know, um, make sure that everybody's focused on that. Um, and just final word is that documentation is crucial. So really good to hear that Susanna are with us. Uh, Susanna will really document this, share it, disseminate it, and really make sure that that conversation continues. So thank you also to them. So with that, um, I will hand over to, to Liz, our moderator. Thank you. Thank you, Keridwen. Uh, good day, everyone. Bonjour à tous. As you've heard, my name is Liz. For those who do not know me, I work for the council. Allow me to open with a very short statement. Most of you have either interacted with the council or we've heard of the council. 
the Water Supply and Sanitation Collaborative Council. One of the things that the council has been known for over the years is to support civil society organizations, what we call the CSOs, and uh, to give the voice to the voiceless, and also to fight the battles for the vulnerable groups that are, most times are left behind or they are forgotten. Now, when it comes to this conversation for today, we are going to specifically focus on what Cameron has called a catalytic fund. The council over the years has been known for giving out catalytic funds. Why? Because we carved our niche in the wash sector as pest setters to those areas whereby most times were either forgotten or not just uh, really focused on. And that is why for us catalytic funding was critical because then that catalytic funding would raise an issue and would draw in different partners through our collaborative nature to have these conversations around the table. So the conversation today will be around different actors, different countries and networks, what they have done and what the results look like at this point in time. As uh, Sarin has talked about it and as Karen has said, the council is closing, but the work does not stop the work continues. So we have planted a seed as the council, given the catalytic fund, and now we are, we are going to hear what the different entities have done with the funding and where, what next. Because the results that will be shared today are supposed to give us that oomph to move forward, to drive on, okay? So it's gonna be an exciting, say one hour, 20 minutes of different discourse on what has happened so far. So as the session starts, we'll have, as uh, Karen has said, we have four countries sharing. We will start with Malawi, where we have uh, Willis uh, Mwandira from Westnet. He's the national coordinator of the West Network in um, Malawi. That's a civil society organization that most of you know, the Umbrella Agency in Malawi. And then we will be followed by Deos Masige from Tanzania, Tawasanet. And then we'll have Ata Benson, from New Ensuite, San Ata Benson de New San au Nigeria, puis le represented by Tobias, that is Kewasnet in Kenya, then CSO Network in Kenya. So one of the things that I will need to remind this, the presenters is, one, please speak in a way that the presenters are able to capture what you are saying and translate to our French-speaking colleagues. Two, you have six minutes. I would kindly request you to stick to the six minutes. So when the six minute mark, actually when it gets to five minutes, when we get to five minutes, I will alert you so that you actually wind down and let us respect each other's time because if you over, overstep your time, you'll be infringing into the next person's time. My last request is for all the participants Kindly, if you're not speaking, mute your mic. Thank you very much. So we will start with uh, Malawi. Willis, please. Willis, are you ready? Willis? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Bonui, bonjour. <laughs> yes, um, this is Willis from Malawi. I'm going to make a presentation of mutual, mutual accountability mechanism processes. Next slide. Yeah, so as we heard from the introduction, uh, the council provided some catalyst funds to Malawi. Uh, to implement a mutual accountability mechanism project. And um, we did from, I think, the month of July to um, this time. And uh, um, the project has had some impact. And I'm going to highlight some of those impacts. Um, the first impact is that um, We've experienced strengthened institutional arrangement through effective engagement among the key actors of the sector. Um, now, 
in Malawi, we have a very vibrant national sanitation and hygiene um, coordination unit. Vibrant national sanitation and coordination unit. And we also have a stronger sector working group that is able to engage with uh, key authorities within the sector. And meanwhile, we're in the process of creating a forum for sector ministers so that at that level, they should be able to dialogue issues on WASH and that they should be able to influence uh, the, uh, the discussions in the parliament. And the second impact is on the sector national policies. Meanwhile, Malawi is in the process of reviewing both the water and sanitation national policies. And um, we want to take this opportunity as we are reviewing this uh, policies to, to make these policies more inclusive so that um, they are able to answer to the demands and aspirations of the sustainable development goals, as well as taking water and sanitation as rights. Next. And the other impact is on the um, tracking of progress, uh, sector progress itself, through this uh, grant. Um, there has been a more effective approach in tracking of the um, sector progress, um, where we are using the joint sector review process from the district level to the subnational level um, up to the uh, national level. So far, we've seen that at the district level, all the 28 districts in Malawi have been involved in that process. And we think that from that level, as we build on uh, to the subnational level, uh, this process will be more thorough and we, um, we should be able to come up with um, very good national joint sector review. And then the other issue is about quality of data. Uh, the grant has helped us to improve um, on the data collection tool so that it's more inclusive, um, especially from the civil society organizations. And we feel that that uh, quality data collection tool will contribute to more effective and inclusive reporting framework for the whole sector. And then um, the grant has also helped us uh, in championing the inclusion of representatives of groups and actors, which were primarily from the groups representing specific leaving no one behind and equality and no non-discrimination interests and provides a space for interaction through WestNet member organizations. So we've seen that um, through this grant, uh, so many other organizations are aware of uh, the importance of including some of these organizations that, and groups that were left behind. Next. So what has been key activities under the MAM project? Uh, the first one has been the, on the National Sanitation and Hygiene Coordination Unit, um, which has been strengthened. Um, this is a um, technical wing of the WASH in Malawi, uh, which brings together uh, people from various um, constituencies and they discuss issues, uh, coordination issues. And then the other a key activity has been that the grant has helped us to, to spearhead the first ever district joint sector review process. Um, yes. 
Hello. Yes, sorry to inter interrupt you. You have two minutes to go. So I was hoping that you'd move to the slides where you have key lessons because we had agreed that we'll be looking at the impact of the project and the lessons. Okay, next. Yes. Yeah, so in, uh, in terms of key lessons, um, we've learned that um, um, the districts with an active uh, district coordination team have got platforms for sharing of information for um, learning. And then we've also learned that great involvement of West Network um, facilitating uh, DCT uh, activities um, have been able to strengthen um, the structures at district level, which will also have an impact in the performance of the district uh, structures. And then thirdly, uh, we've also learned that district joint sector reviews are great platforms for tracking the undertakings and, and, and following up of the commitments that were made at national level. So even at district level, uh, questions are asked on how um, the commitments that were made at national level can be um, dealt with. And then we've also learned in Malawi that non-wash actors also have got innovative ways of contributing to the uh, sector in terms of uh, the Eastern nation. Next. I uh, will be interested to get your way forward now. Share with us your way forward. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, uh, but in terms of challenges that I'll go through that I think we 19 and that um, somehow we're still dealing, we're still grappling with the issues of um, the line ministry, the ministries that uh, were sent with WASH. Um, we still need to improve on their partnerships and their working uh, operations. Uh, next. Yeah, in terms of uh, sustainability approaches, um, we, we think that um, um, still um, these constituencies which have been involved during this year will continue to work together strongly um, even uh, in the future. Next. Yeah, in terms of way forward, government will still continue to play a leading role in the mutual accountability mechanism and that the moment we feel that the momentum that we've created this year um, the engagement that we have done should continue beyond um, this year and um, that during the joint sector review the undertakings will also re reflect the mutual accountability processes um, that we have uh, been doing uh, this year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Willis. Fantastic. We've had lots from Malawi. You've done quite a bit on sector strengthening and uh, most importantly, system strengthening whereby you, are, you have targeted from the lowest level to the national level. Different activities have come in to ensure that there's system strengthening. Thank you very much for that. Now we'll go next to, the next country to present to us will be Tanzania, Deus Masige from Tawasanet, the civil society organization in Tanzania will be sharing with us next. Deus, over to you. You have six minutes and uh, try to stay within time, please. Deus? Deus? He was somewhere.
Liz, I think he might have dropped off. Okay, I'll, then I'll we try will and trace him. try and trace him. And then in the meantime, we can have um, Nigeria presenting. Atta Benson. So we'll go to the Nigeria slides. Yes, Benson. So we'll let you present as we try to find uh, our colleague from Tanzania. So you have your six minutes. Uh, please proceed. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm happy to be here and uh, we are happy to be part of uh, the network benefiting from the support from the BSCC and um, SWAT. First, I have to say, if you have a challenge and you don't have means of addressing it, you get frustrated. But this support we got was a big relief to us because this, there, these have been a, a sudden issues which we've been looking forward to addressing, particularly at the state level, which is the subnational level. One of the achievements of this um, of the support has been enhancing the capacity of uh, NUSAN members in improving their knowledge in advocacy as a mutual accountability mechanism. In addition to that, NUSAN uh, was able to draw members from people living with disability network to benefit from, from this. And this also enhanced their capacity. With this capacity building next effort, NUSAN members were able to um, conduct an assessment on policy assessment in seven states, and they came up with very good results and very good um, findings, which were equipped to engage further with uh, the various state um, authorities. The people living with disability, in addition, also became aware of what um, the importance of WASH, and also to the point that to see that WASH is also a human right. Following the inclusion of the people living with disability in this exercise, because the Federal Minister of Water Resources was strongly involved, they were recognized and they, they were made to be long to the National Task Group Presentation, which is the highest decision making body on WASH in the country. Realizing the importance of people living with a um, disability, that it is always good that they represent themselves not to be represented by a third party, because this process was really an eye-opener for us, because we have people from the deaf and dumb group, we have people from the blind, we have people from the lame uh, impaired and limb impaired and group. So each group has its own different way of dealing with issues. So we had to learn that you don't just have a blanket and attend, give a blanket attention, you deal with specific specific issues, and you also have to know specific names which these people are addressed with in order not to get in trouble with them. Government part, through this, government partners were really excited at this um, program, that it also helps them to bring out their, their issues, to identify their issues, to the point that the government um, officials even want Nissan to be advocating on their behalf, because as civil, civil service, they cannot advocate on by themselves or for themselves. So they needed a third party to advocate for them. So this has been a part of uh, the achievements. In addition to this, we had the opportunity and the willingness and readiness of government institutions to open up. They are now ready to tell us what the problems are, where the problems lie. So they are ready to open up. They now bought their confidence. And from this, we identify a lot of budgetary issues with a um, budget not released in all, almost all the states or budget created and used um, this, the wash sector as a laundry pipe to siphon the money for politics. So a lot of things was discovered in, through this um, exercise. And the, this also gave us opportunity to, to assess uh, the policy doc documents where there are policy documents existing in states and where they, don't, where they are not existing, we also advise them. From this involvement, or from our advocacy, we are able to impress on the government, which and through that, one of our network was really made to be involved and guide their state in, um, in, the, in drawing up of the um, roadmap. 
in rolling up um, ODF uh, roadmap for the for the state. And through this, a lot of uh, partners are now familiar with the term mutual accountability mechanism, and they now see the need to hold each other accountable in um, in whatever they are doing. From this, we also we were able to impress on them, and state have well also able to realize that they need to set up to have a strong um, technical um, group in the state, like state task group on sanitation, just as we have at the national level. And in addition to that, we discovered that some, some of the states do not have a technical um, working group on menstrual health and hygiene, and which they have promised to set up, and they are ready to also work with them, other partners. They've been able to identify the need for coordination, strong coordination, because this was a major gap among all the stakeholders in, in almost all the states that there had not been good coordination among their partners in the state. And seeing collaboration, collaboration was also um, an outstanding issue, which is also, the states are also improving um, upon. Through this exercise, Niger uh, Nissan members were in, included in the training to help the Clean Nigeria campaign to achieve the ODF um, goal by 2025. So some of our Nissan members were, were invited and trained by the Ministry, Federal Minister of Water Resources to join in the capacity building of the various states that they will be um, intervening in. And from you this... Want, oh, Benson, get, would you want to share with us your key learnings? Okay. Yeah. With this, with this, we are also able to get um, one of the states to promise the release of uh, 200 million naira for WASH for 2021 and um, 2021 um, budget. Through this planning, people involved at uh, our key learning is that it is important that people living with disability are involved and also those um, uh, living in vulnerable situations are also involved. The issue of budget tracking also becomes very key, that we need to engage more in budget um, tracking so that, so that some of these budgetary issues would be addressed. Then issue, um, budget um, evidence-based advocacy was very key because the stakeholders were able to see the results of the survey that was carried out on each of their states. And then multi-sectoral multi multi and stakeholders involvement in the wash is very key in achieving good results and also achieving the goal of the country. The people living with um, disability involvement, not only at national level as it has been done, but also at the state level should be included in the various activities at, um, at the state level. We also discovered that it is possible that two um, partners like such as SWA and um, WSCC can support a program and such program running um, side by side. And we also see the importance of um, bringing up um, mental health and hygiene and setting up strong technical group in the various state, as well as setting up a coordinating mechanism in the state to see for the efficiency of um, the wash activities in um, each of the states. Then through this, the promotion of mutual accountability mechanism will be increased because mutual accountability mechanism is now becoming more popular, people are now becoming um, more known. And the private sector, uh, we are now also encouraging the involvement of private sector. And one key thing we uh, brought to this, the attention of the state is the establishment of um, a financial investment uh, plan for, for work in the state. Through this, they can collaborate with the um, private sector to, to provide them increased services or extend their services in their various um, communities. And um, way forward, we intend to follow up on the various um, commitments which the states have um, agreed to, to see if they actually to ensure that they are uh, actually um, realized. In addition to that, we want to see how more states can benefit from this because it has been an eye-opening situation whereby because not all civil society members, organizations have this capacity, but through this we're able to train and increase their, enhance their capacity, which they were able, able to apply in the field. And we also want to see collaboration in the sector, in, both at the state and national level. 
and um, engage more of the um, state situation. One, one particular important thing that came up was the establishment of situation room, which we use in collecting information, collecting data from the from the field. And this we are going to continue to use even after this um, this um, intervention because it is a hub through which information can come can be sent from the various state to for us to know what are the challenges, what are the gaps in the various states. So with this, we see achieving more success in the coming year and getting more involvement and strengthening more of our members in the coming year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eta Benson. Thank you. You have done so much, but then we're also harassing you to keep it short. There is so much that you have shared with us and there is still so much that we need to learn from you. I'm hoping that by the end of this webinar, we'll be able to share all the presentations with all the participants on this call. We have 83 participants, which is a very big turnout and uh, people are curious to learn and they're asking questions and they're engaging in the chat, which is very good. So for the other participants, please uh, keep asking, keep engaging. There's so much more coming through. For Nigeria, we have had several things that have emerged. What is uh, very outstanding is uh, what is just finished the situation room that they have come up with, that's quite an interesting thing that uh, we need to think through what is a situation room, how would a wash situation room look like, and how would the members, the network members be engaged in such. It's also interesting to hear that um, the people living with disability have been integrated into the national uh, task, task group on sanitation, which we know is a body in Nigeria that uh, actually holds the, the learning agenda of WASH in that country, both at the federal and the state level. So it's very interesting to know that we have non-WASH actors now being integrated into the NTGS. And uh, the issue of multi-stakeholder collaboration, we cannot overemphasize anymore because it is something that is one of the key success factors for mutual accountability, as well as capacity strengthening for members and the non-state, uh, the non-WASH actors in this case, we have uh, people living with disability. Thank you very much, Atta Benson. Now I see we have uh, Mark Dales from Tanzania back online. Ma, uh, please, we have uh, you ready now? Six minutes for you as well. Okay, I'm please proceed. I'm ready, I'm ready, Lizzie. Please proceed. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Amira. Thank you for giving opportunity. Uh, thank you for our members for participating for this uh, sharing experience, experiences uh, from different angles of the world. Uh, uh, next, please. I'll be sharing uh, with, because of time, I'll be sharing on the achievements and the uh, best practices, lessons learned, and the what you came to learn, uh, what you have achieved in terms of uh, our, our mutual accountability mechanism, uh, with the two assignments that we had on uh, uh, CCO uh, commitment review and also reviewing on uh, what the government has had committed uh, to achieve in the, in the coming year, that was 2019. And also what we had to make follow through the government. Uh, the government uh, was okay uh, work on the wash network within the country and the, the pandemic in particular and they are really uh, supporting our efforts in particular when, uh, we, when we went to, the, uh, to work with the people with the disabilities. So also the, better, the institutions that uh, we, are, we worked with uh, were also the open doors for us to to, to do more engagement uh, with them because it was an uh, it was an, uh, a good approach that we went to the, to people that are most trained. Uh, uh, had, has less attention. There was, I think uh, from it's, from the engagement was, of sorry? the uh, the watch. Maybe you yes, switch please, off please, your please. camera. Please switch off your camera because we are losing you. So switch off your camera. Okay. Then you are consistent. Yes. Please proceed. Okay. Uh, on this, uh, we did the six worship studies uh, with the support from WCSCT. And uh, so they, we have drafted the recommendations from uh, uh, recommendations from the studies. We put them on the advocacy letter that will be shared with the Minister of Finance uh, in the coming, uh, in the coming, the coming, since the, the, the president uh, confirmed the cabinet. Also, the best practices that we noted uh, when we were working with the people with the disabilities. 
uh, we supported them with the liquid soaps and sanitizers that is uh, to them was a paramount and it was really uh, life touching because when uh, when you are preaching uh, the gospel uh, of hand washing uh, was also to give you the means of to do the hand washing so uh, for this exercise was really encouraging to see people are uh, provided with the what the exact, the exact they can do with on the hand washing particularly during the uh, the covid pandemic uh, period uh, also, the network, the Tawasa Net, as a member of CSA supporting and uh, ourselves. Uh, please back a bit. Back. Yes. Uh, yes. <clears throat> And also the best practice also we noted is uh, some of the members were, were doing the open training in the, in the open markets. That's where most of the people are gathering. So demonstrations of how to, to do the hand washing and also to cover, uh, to use the, uh, the, the masks also was done. And this was really impressive. Next. Uh, Uh, next, please. All right, uh, working with them. Next, uh, the people with uh, kids with disability. Next, please. Uh, among the live not behind, also worked the, uh, worked with the, uh, the street children and uh, 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 children with the, uh, with the albinism. That is uh, one of the class of the uh, class of, uh, of the people with the disabilities. Uh, on the slides you are you are looking, we have been it was a team working on. The, CSO commitment review in Mwanza uh, that we are also tracking on what the government has committed and what we committed at the CSO uh, to make follow-ups on, uh, in, we'll make sure that uh, the wash, the wash provider is, is, is achieved in particular the water coverage has increased and the water they were supporting, the uh, water was supporting documents behind it, the achievement. Next. Next. Uh, in terms of lessons learned, I'll just summarize and uh, uh, we have to walk the talk. So uh, as members, we are training, walking uh, along and uh, supporting these ones. It's uh, supporting the people with the disabilities in, uh, with hand soap and sanitizers and uh, reflex materials was uh, walking uh, the talk. Uh, of the emphasis also uh, to see uh, one of the lessons I just raised, uh, uh, there's a national water, uh, national water fund that has in the country, that is a government uh, institution, which has been supporting the water, the water, the water sector, uh, which also in this commitment, it has, uh, has contributed in expanding the water coverage in the country. So this is coming from the, from the petrol, uh, the petrol, when, when we buy the petrol, uh, I think we, there are some amount that is being uh, directed to the, to the, to the water uh, sector contributions. Next, please. Uh, next, these are the elders who have been supporting elders. Next, please. Time, I think, is rushing. Next. Just to go to the next, I think we can, I can, I can share the next. Yes, next. I can just leave this one. Advocacy messages. This is a, one of the key recommendations we have put. We have captured it from the uh, the study that will be shared by shared it to the to different line ministries, including Minister of Education, Minister of uh, Minister of Finance, and the Minister of Health, as well. So we are compiling these uh, these CSU members as well as to the ministries. Next, please. Uh, so what, what is our next plan? Our next plan is, is to uh, participate in the coming sanitation conference uh, to share challenges and recommendations in the various studies we have, we have already conducted. And also, we shall be sharing advocacy messages to the to line ministries as well as to the Minister of Finance. Uh, 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 also, we shall be sharing and amplify the CSO commitment status uh, to the government during the sanitation conference. And also this one will be shared during the coming magic in 2021. As well also we share the study in uh, the coming uh, magic week. And also for this December, we shall be promoting media engagement uh, through Wash Awards. That is, uh, so because these are, the media is one of the key, uh, key informants in terms of awareness creation to the public. Next, please.
next. Okay, back one, one, one uh, we, we plan it also to, to engage the champions, uh, parliamentary, parliamentarians champions, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, the policy sharing, uh, to ensure that the, the policy and the financial discussions that have been aired through the picked up in the government. So these are, we, we, we plan that the, the, the parliamentarians have, have a slot to, to work more in terms of uh, uh, putting, uh, pushing the policy at the, at the government level. And so one of the, th one of, uh, one of the, uh, as I'm, I'm finishing up, we have the people. Uh, these are the blind swans. So we, when you're put, uh, sharing the EST materials, uh, we somewhere we forgot uh, to prepare the special materials for them. I think for the next plants, I should be also taking care of these ones. Liz, I'm just finalizing the last slides. Next. <laughs> Yes, so uh, in the coming Sanitation Conference, we are planning to, to have a side, uh, side meetings. Uh, uh, we also plan to have visual, physical and visual with the government officials so that we are, we, this is a kind of a lobbying uh, techniques that we, uh, we shall be using in terms of putting clear the messages to what uh, to the official gov government officials easily mm -hmm. and uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a quick manner. Also, we shall be sharing the findings through summarizing the findings in each line ministries and taking specifically if it's, a, it's about talking about the children, it go to the children and for agriculture, for sort of for a healthy as well. As to uh, the means of water, show all the best in the Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Thank you very much. You have rushed Next. through your presentation too much. I think much. I winded up. <laughs> yes, you have. But then you have interesting things to tell us, but you're rushing so much and we are still listening and hoping to get more. But the beauty of it is that this presentation will be shared and the people on this call will still engage with you to find out more of what you're doing. You have very interesting things happening in Tanzania, engaging with non-wash actors, uh, especially targeting different categories of people living with disability. It's a big challenge because there are various needs and various capacities, but you have taken that up, which is quite challenging. And uh, the issue of uh, budgetary advocacy is a big one. And the fact that you'll be taking this to, the, to the, the, the National Sanitation Week platform with the Ministry of Finance is also very exciting. The idea that uh, you have identified various platforms that have a big audience to carry on the advocacy is also very interesting and we are hoping that it will, it will bring in more impact and more engagement with the other actors who are wash actors and non-wash actors as well. So now we'll go to Kenya where we will have uh, Tobias presenting on the behalf of uh, the Wash Alliance which, uh, which he works for as the CEO, but also is a SWA focal point and um, representing as well Kewasnet, the Kenya Civil Society Network. Tobias, over to you. Uh, thank you, uh, Liz and colleagues, uh, and good day to all of you. On behalf of uh, my colleague, uh, Samson uh, Shivachi Madesi, who has just joined now, may I present this for Kenya. Next. Uh, we had the sanitation and hygiene for all meetings in Kenya. Uh, what this grant that we got from WC supports us mostly was that SWA as we know, Facebook is providing a platform which I won't go into, and I won't even go to point two, which is uh, the SWA engagements and partnerships. But I say that in Kenya, uh, the multi accountability mechanism has empowered partners to hold each other accountable and for progress towards SDG and reinforce national and multi uh, stakeholder planning and review process. And this thanks to the grant we had from WCC which he got and worked together uh, as partners in Kenya. Next. Now, when you talk about the LMM and the coordination at a glance, in the sanitation in Kenya is a shared function, and indeed as all other African countries, and this between the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Water and Irrigation and Sanitation. Uh, this grant came in Kenya at a very critical time when actually there was a shift in policy where the Ministry of, of traditionally Minister of, of Health has had leadership in sanitation, 
This time around, the Ministry of Water was given more mandate in sanitation. And so um, the funding we got from uh, WCC helped us cement our partnerships between the Ministry of Water and the Ministry of Health in addressing our coordination uh, mechanisms in the country. First, the coordination among the, the, the partner ministries and then all of us, the sector. And then next now moving towards the, uh, the, the, the commitments. And I'm saying that because uh, we have had a long standing um, uh, draft uh, commitments in the, uh, um, uh, in, the, in the sector, which had never been finalized. But through this grant, we're able now to finalize this grant and bring on board both Minister of Water, Minister of Health, and as partners. And we did that uh, together as, as, as a group. Uh, so the Minister of Water Education uh, also has come up now, there's now leading, has come up with the National Sanitation Sharing Committee and has co-opted the Minister of Health in it. And I must say that health has accepted. For us, it's a very big milestone because health has now agreed on the Minister of Water Leadership on sanitation and also pro providing Minister of Water with the uh, support they need and all of us, the sector. So the members of this sharing committee, uh, of course, we are all, all there involved. They are uh, Minister of Education, Environment, and the CSOs, and the private sector. Next. Uh, there exists in Kenya sanitation policy, uh, uh, which, is, which is a, uh, was drawn, drafted by the Minister of, of Health. But now the Minister of Water and Sanitation is developing a national sanitation management policy, now that they have been given more mandate in sanitation. And thanks again, this grant, that we have been able to bring them together. Uh, before the, uh, we got this funding from WCC, uh, uh, there, there was, um, let me talk about suspicion. Each of ministers was doing the things on their own. But we were able to bring the, the, them together. And even in, in, the, in the development of this policy, new management policy, Minister of Water and Minister of Health both participated in the initial uh, uh, in the meeting that we had of developing the, the policy on sanitation management. Then uh, the big one again is sanitation stakeholder meet, uh, 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 that meeting that was held on 1st October, uh, which I said earlier that uh, the SUA and MAM commitments, uh, government ones were finalized for the first time after a long period. And we went ahead again now as uh, CSOs to finalize ours now the CSOs. And uh, the CSO commitments have also been finalized. And we are presenting them to, of course, we are anticipated to present them the first week. We haven't done it yet. But more, more about that is that even apart from just presenting them to the Secretariat, we are looking at how can you use them internally as Kenya uh, stakeholders. Next. Uh, then our next steps. But before I say the next steps, let me say what we have learned so far and what we have been able to achieve in a nutshell. We have strengthened our, uh, uh, our, our cooperation, we have strengthened our, um, our commitments as uh, stakeholders in the water sector in Kenya, both government, CSOs, private sector. Through this funding, we have been able to strengthen that. Uh, for the first time, we have been able to uh, finalize the long pending uh, MAM commitments at the sector. We have also uh, been able, as, as a sector, uh, to put together sanitation management started putting together the sanitation management uh, policy led by Minister of, of, of Water. And then we have been able to bring together both ministries of water and the health together. And we have been able to uh, empower partners to hold each other accountable in the sector. And then um, we have also, on a big way, uh, through this funding again that we had, because there were two similar funding, one went to uh, Kewasna directly working in the counties, sub-counties. So we have been able also to empower sub-counties, sub-county level empowerment. Apart from what we are doing at the national level, we have also been able to empower lower levels of government to be able to work together now in coordination mechanisms, which had not been there previously. So looking forward, our next steps, uh, we are looking at finalizing our commitments and reviewing them as we go by and sharing with the Secretariat. But I said earlier that uh, apart from just sharing, we want to see how we can use them internally among ourselves, holding each other accountable. 
Then uh, we want to define roles and responsibilities for each stakeholder. And then we want to establish uh, SWA and MAM uh, processes at the county level, like the one that we're having at national level, to implement, uh, to implement at the county level. So we want now to move from the national level to the county level. Then uh, we are anticipating also to be having quarterly stakeholder meetings to assess progress uh, in meeting the commitments by each stakeholder. And then uh, we anticipate also to be reporting against each achievements and commitments by, at each quarter as, 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 as we meet. I want to say that all this process, uh, now that uh, uh, SWA and the small grants are not there, they will need for support. And I'm happy with what Kevin is saying that, and, and, and Lee, that although our WC is no longer there, but the process must, must continue. And we must find a way of moving forward and continuing this, this process and looking at uh, what is a successor, the small grants, or how can we best address the small grants? Because all the next steps that are putting in place, they all require uh, support uh, from our partnerships internally and externally. So I want to thank you very much for listening. That's how much you have been able to do and uh, our next steps in Kenya. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tobias. Thank you for sharing with us your experiences in Kenya and also for sticking to time. Uh, you, have, you have raised some critical issues. It's been a struggle in the sector, the sanitation sector, because in most countries we have a, a challenge with the, the home for sanitation. So it's normally fragmented. It's straddled across different ministries. But then uh, the grant that you received from the council has helped you to mobilize the ministries to be able to have that difficult conversation that you've been struggling with, as you mentioned. And now the, the, this National Sanitation Committee that has come up has both ministries in and other line ministries, which is very exciting. We look forward to hearing more on that. And uh, you said something interesting about internally using the SWA commitments. I think when we talk about setting up the SWA commitments, it's for our, for our national use, and then we share it with the Secretariat. So I guess the next level is, how do these conversations go to the county level? What you call the county level, some countries would be calling them sub-regional levels. That the, the MAM processes would continue and these conversations would continue, and the SWA commitments would also be flagged for the different uh, governments and sub-governments to see our state level to engage on the same. So it's, uh, it's quite interesting what's happening in Kenya. And the fact that uh, different ministries have had this conversation and now you're able to say you have finalized the commitments that have been drawn. Fantastic. Thank you so much for all the presenters. And uh, now we have a, a Q&A session, a question and answer session whereby some, uh, some questions have been generated in the chat box and some interactions have happened. This session, I will let um, Kerry Dwen bring out the questions, but I'll start with the first one. And the first one, uh, the first question as Kerry Dwen is organizing herself would be going to Willis from Malawi. When you made your presentation, you talked about the joint sector reviews from the district level to the national level. A question was raised in the chat box that uh, they were curious to find out from you, how do the joint sector reviews at the district level feed into the national level or ho how do they align? Willis, would you please answer that? Yes. Um, the review processes um, started at district level and um, the sort of information um, and the tool that was used at district level, um, it was uh, mirrored by um, what sort of information will be reviewed at national level. So from the district level, uh, the districts, um, we put together the information which will be taken to subnational level, where they will also review it at subnational level or regional level. And then from the regional level, we'll have the final review at national level. 
So that's how the process um, is being conducted. I don't know whether um, I'm putting it clear. Okay, I guess um, in case that's not very clear to everybody, we will get further interaction on that. Eridwen, any other questions from the chat box? Yes, hello, uh, Liz, thank you. Actually, not many, um, but the other one, which is actually also for Willis. So I hope you're still listening, Willis. Uh, yes, I'm it's here. from Evelyn uh, McKenna, and she would like to know if you could please share some examples of the non-wash sectors or actors that have been involved. You mentioned it, uh, but I think, you know, you're obviously trying to get through quickly. Um, so she would like to know just one or two examples and how do they contribute, please? Thank you, Willis. Uh, Liz, just before you go, uh, because I was supposed to summarize all the questions, we had one from Dr. Sam Nang about how does man work in the hard circumstances of COVID-19? This has been answered by Anjani in the chat. Uh, so I think that's okay. Uh, please look at the chat. And then there was only just one other request that we, um, we need to make sure that the acronyms, the abbreviations are spelled out because it wasn't understood. But no more questions. If anyone does have questions, please put in the chat now. Uh, over. Okay, so we will have Willis responding to the question that has just been raised by McKenna. Uh, thank you, Kredwin and Liz. Um, in Malawi, yes, we worked with um, some Nanwash actors. Uh, one of them is St. John of God. Um, this institution normally works with the um, um, people uh, who have got mental challenges. And um, when we're trying to, to look at um, these people who, are, who have got um, mental challenges, felt like uh, there are some of the groups that are left behind with WASH services. And indeed, our friends in St. John of God demonstrated that um, Um, these people with mental uh, problems uh, with regard to uh, wash services. And uh, so far we've got very good uh, examples and some of those examples have been documented um, of uh, children, um, uh, even some adults who have been helped through innovative ways, which our friends in St. John of God have done. And um, the other institution is prisons. Um, there's an experience in Malawi that um, um, there's some lack of some wash services with some sectors of people that are inmates in Malawi prisons. The example of men who are menstruating um, before the intervention, most of them those women, when they were menstruating, they would uh, get the soiled um, absorbent and hide it maybe under mattresses. So the rooms were, could become very stinky. And St. John of God came in with an intervention of um, teaching people how to make um, um, homemade ad absorbents. And, um, and they also built them a, a local incinerator. And uh, with that intervention, the situation in the prisons uh, where those interventions were applied improved tremendously. And uh, for the incinerator, uh, that incinerator is not only used by the, the prison, it's also used by the communities close to the prison. So, um, you can see how the non-wash actors can come in and um, help to answer some of the problems that uh, wash sector uh, encounters. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Eridwen, I think there's a question in the chat yeah. box. There's three more now, actually. Uh, I shall read them out, if that's all right, Liz. Yes, please. So, so first of all, we have a question from Chay San from Answer in Cambodia. Uh, very interesting, this one. For SWA, we know the role of the private sector is very important. We haven't heard much about the private sector. Uh, how, how have they engaged them? Um, so that's one. Um, secondly, from Jamie Myers, very, another very interesting question around the research component of some of these projects. He wanted to know how willing were governments to listen and to respond to negative results? Uh, now, I know actually that in Tanzania, you know, as we mentioned, there was a, a couple of studies. I understand there were some challenges, so that might be a good one to ask Mac, but of course anyone could answer it. Uh, and final question that's been coming through is from George, uh, I think it's Joroge, I might have pronounced your uh, surname incorrectly, sorry George. Uh, this is specifically to the Kenya group. Uh, were there any other outcomes, let's say unintended outcomes, that have come from this process and from the activities? Okay, so uh, for the private sector, we will request uh, Nigeria, Atta Benson. You mentioned something about multi-stakeholder collaboration. Did that also involve private sector? And then as Atta Benson is answering that, uh, Tanzania, Deus, maybe you could take up the question on uh, how to deal with government when you have a, a negative feedback to give based on the studies you have done. And then uh, Kenya, you pick up the last question. So Atta Benson. Yes, uh, thank you very much. In Nigeria, there's uh, this strong collaboration with um, the private sector, particularly with the Clean Nigeria campaign. The private sector is, we have an OP wash, OPSM wash, private sector um, group coordinating the wash sector and all the private, all the private um, sectors in the country, not only the private sector and also mobilizing um, and Nigerians in diaspora to also come together and support the wash uh, intervention, the uh, Clean Nigeria campaign. And we work closely with this, and this was what we advised the states on, that if they set up a um, um, financial investment plan, they can work with private sector. The private sector can look at such plan and see where they come in. In addition to that, other partners can also look at that plan and see where to come in in the, in the plan. And somebody asked a question about how a, a government official can be asked um, such a, uh, some hard questions. I think one of the questions I just mentioned. You see, from the survey we carried out, we were with one of the state governors. From the revelation we were presenting to him, the governor was shocked to the point that he almost could not talk because the, it seems from what we presented to the governor, he was getting a different report. So probably they must have been telling the governor everything was fine, we have done this. But for the governor to have seen the evidence of a survey carried out on each of those facilities that we are supposed to have been working, the, the governor was dumbfounded. So, and you could see that in some other uh, government uh, partners we engage, they were even ready to tell us more, to open up to us, because they, this would need help. But sometimes if you don't work closely with them, they, you would think they are just covering up. Some of them are suffering, they need help. So, they are willing to work and they are, they are ready with the kind of information, the revelation we came up with. For instance, uh, budget, um, they make up budget, the budget will not be released. The, the, part, the department will suffer. So these are, this will need help. So this is where uh, government needs um, this information and they are, they are welcoming this um, kind of information. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Deus, you could, you could add on to something as well on the government response when you have had evidence indicating things are not going well, especially for you who has been promoting a lot of uh, uh, advocacy towards budgetary allocation. We can't hear yeah. you. Our case, uh, which we are almost, 
and can you hear me yes can you hear can. me now yes yes on uh, we, we, we are trying to we are trying to work together uh collaboratively with the government closely to the government so what we see is uh, yes we have uh, the some uh, pinching results touching results in particular on uh, finances and the budgeting so uh, it's about how do we present the results that matters to, uh, to for us is a lot because if you if you if you have the results particularly the negative ones and you stand on the, uh, on the platform and they shout now this is the this is the, the government is not doing everything anything and uh, this is what we have found and whatever particularly you, you expect to receive the negative uh, uh, response so what we have we have fine we have slotted uh, some of the findings uh, we shall be putting them to line ministries respective line ministries we put side meetings we discuss we share and uh, and uh, slowly they will take we want you to go for the conference sanitation conference in Dodoma. We shall have side meetings with the respective uh, 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 government officials. We sit with them. We discuss it friendly. Uh, this is what we have researched, and this is what we have found, and this is what we think can be the proposed uh, maybe intervention. In this way, I believe if somebody is not. Uh, 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 it's not addressing you, then you discuss. I think there will be positive uptake of these recommendations uh, and the findings, the recommendations, what we have found and what we think can be the best way to approach. And also, we put ourselves in, our pres in the presence to see if there's anything from the CSO we can assist we are ready uh, to chip in and this is the way we can we can work instead of uh, being the watchdogs and the, and the, uh, the point, uh, finger pointers thank you very much thank you very much for eloquently answering that question thank you so much i'm sure people on this call highly appreciate that tactic of having side meetings having a discourse that is private and then presenting the hard evidence before standing up on the platform and shouting at the top of your voices because then that is very agitating. Thank you so much, Deus, for that. The Kenya team, Tobias and Samson, there was a question to you as well. Yeah, can I just say something then? Yes, something please, Tobias. Uh, uh, George is asking other outcomes, including unplanned outcomes from the SUA mom process or other SUA activities in Kenya. I must say the biggest uh, gain for us in this was um, the strengthening of sector collaboration. And that comes with a lot of other goodies because either collectively or individually, now we can be able to go to um, uh, issues with Minister of Water, Minister of Health, and work with them together. And from that meeting we had, uh, we have been able to hold two other meetings uh, as, a, as sector players together. Uh, so that was an icebreaker. Like, and I must say that uh, that's the biggest achievement we've had, and with that now comes together that we can be able to uh, the, the, the bring together ministries in all other development issues uh, without having to, to think about am I is, who is leading and who is coming not coming. The ministers have agreed to work together, and that's important for us because now the sector can work together um, in that scope. So yes, all other activities I must say we can work together the ministries. Uh, as a result of that meeting we had of a commitment where ministers pledged to work together. Unless uh, Samson ah, yes. has something else to add. Samson, does, do you have anything else to add or that's it? Yeah, just quickly, um, a, a little bit of an emphasis of that. Uh, just um, an apparent expanded space, because we've seen now the ministry, uh, starting from that conversation to, you know, engage civil society quite more. Uh, around the um, mutual accountability mechanism process, but also um, in the other processes that uh, uh, Tobias mentioned about uh, the process of the development of the uh, sanitation management policy, we are seeing uh, quite a lot of space being created, uh, civil society being invited to on the table to be part of the process. Uh, finally, I would also like to say, as uh, Tobias mentioned, we also took these uh, conversations uh, 
to the sub-national level. And I think uh, because we put in place uh, uh, what we call uh, community dialogues, where we could have, we could have uh, communities participate uh, or directly engage government and service providers. We've seen, at least in the areas where we focused, um, the service providers are coming up much more uh, to make information available uh, to the public as, as compared to before uh, this engagement. So I think this is not what we had expected would uh, happen, but it has come out as an, uh, um, an outcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samson. I want to close this session by just saying one thing. It is very clear from all the presentations that when we say MAM, M-A-M, Mutual Accountability Mechanism, I think that the, the most important thing that is coming out of these presentations is the aspect of mutual, not even the accountability aspect. It's mutual. It is how do you bring in, how do you draw in the different stakeholders so that they actually realize what they are bringing on the table is valued, is valuable. Then the next step would be, are they able to be accountable? Because it's a bit, it's a, it's, it's a bit of a journey of building trust before you get to the accountability bit. Because unless you are credible, you have integrity, it is very difficult to have that accountability conversation. And this is very evident from all the, uh, the, the presentations we've had from the different speakers, that a multi-stakeholder approach is critical, engaging different actors is critical, and having a joint vision is imperative. But then most importantly is that partnership has to be on a mutually acceptable basis. Not that others are much higher or much bigger than the others, but the, when you sit around the table, you are actually sitting around the table and not others standing or others sitting on the floor. And I think that's what mutual accountability actually means in a nutshell, based on the presentations we have had. Now, we'll switch gears si uh, slightly by listening to other people as well who have been on this journey for the past few months, who, who dedicated their time to do some of the things as well to ensure that we have non-wash actors on board, we have different things that are coming in, we are bringing in government and different stakeholders towards the same discourse. So we we're going to have a panel discussion and uh, we will hear different experiences as well from different countries. So we will, uh, I will, I will uh, introduce my colleague, Estelle Robinson, who worked very closely with the next uh, lot of uh, discussions that we are going to have. Estelle will introduce to us what she's been doing with them, how she's been doing it with them. And then we will also hear their, their, their reflections and their learnings as well from what they have been engaged in this past few months. Estelle Robinson, over to you. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to, to everyone. Um, it's been great to, to be listening to uh, the presentations beforehand. Um, and um, the session is, uh, Will, is very complementary to the work that's been happening because the, the pilot project was done uh, as complementary to uh, the work that you've just been hearing about. So um, the, the council decided early on this year to pilot a program um, to, to build its learning um, or the learning for the sanitation and hygiene fund uh, around one way that it might want to in future uh, deliver on its strategic enablers um, around mutual accountability and also uh, multi-stakeholder multi approaches. Um, so the program that uh, I've been managing this year and had brilliant support uh, from Eloise uh, over the last few months around um, was piloted in four countries and you're going to hear from uh, three of the countries uh, today. Uh, Togo, Madagascar and Uganda, the fourth being Cambodia. Um, and this project really focused on strengthening uh, national civil society organizations and national uh, networks and their activities around advocacy and accountability on sanitation, hygiene and menstrual health. And to really ensure uh, that the voices of people in vulnerable situations 
are heard in policy dialogues and debates. Um, so, you know, all six projects that were uh, funded through this did some absolutely brilliant work. And just to give you a flavor of some of the activities, um, it ranged from strengthening uh, existing or creating new uh, national networks. So for instance, in Uganda, building the skills uh, and developing an advocacy strategy for their network uh, to advocate on financial accountability, uh, both at national and at community level. So that was in Togo. Uh, or developing a, a range of good practices or identifying some really good practices um, and ways forward in better including uh, different voices, be it uh, you know, voices from uh, different uh, disability organizations uh, and groups, uh, vulnerable women, uh, for instance, in Madagascar, or you know, in youth, which you'll hear also from Martin uh, in Uganda. So that just gives you a flavor of some of the activities uh, that have taken place over uh, the past six months. Um, but I'm gonna start there and hand over because uh, what you really want to be doing is hearing from uh, those who, who led these projects and the learnings uh, from these, uh, these pilot projects. Uh, so uh, over to you, Liz. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please allow me to introduce my panelists. Uh, and I'm hoping that when I introduce them, they'll be able to have their cameras on. And then, uh, yes, so that you can get to meet them. Our first panelist is Arsène. He's the president of an organization that is a national civil society advocacy umbrella platform for WASH in Madagascar. Arsène, are you there? Arsene, where are you? Okay, that is our first. Uh, oui, je vous entends très bien. Oui, merci beaucoup. Je vous entends. And prie. then we have our next discussant is Dr. Joshua. She is um, she heads the and also an umbrella organization for different federations of disabled persons. And uh, this means uh, it's, a, it's a federation with different small groups that deal with different disabilities and also in Madagascar. Josu, are you there? Josu? Bear with us because the translation has to happen. Joshua? Okay, our third discussant is Emil. Emil is from Togo and uh, he works for an organization that is a national WASH advocacy, capacity building and learning platform for civil society organizations in Togo. Emil, are you there? Emil? Hello, we, 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 we. Merci, bienvenue. Oui, je vous entends bien. Oui. And then we also have Unia. Unia heads the umbrella organization for non-state actors working in the in the wash sector in Uganda. Unia, welcome. Hello everyone. Nice to see you. Hi, thanks, Liz. Uh, hi, everyone. Then our other discussant is Martin. Martin leads a dynamic youth-led NGO, providing a link between youth and governance policy processes in Uganda. Martin, are you? Hi. Welcome, Martin. So this is what we are going to do. I will ask the, the various discussants a question that uh, they will be able to answer. In the process, we'll get to hear more about what they have been doing in the last few months and how this uh, connects with what we've been discussing and how it has boosted the work they have done in their countries. So we'll start with Arsene. Arsene from Madagascar. This is my question to Arsene. We are aware you work with disadvantaged women to strengthen their voices. 
What are the key learnings you have gained about voice and accountability in this project? So we'll hear from Afsen the things he has learned as he promoted the voice for disadvantaged okay, people. Merci pour... oui? okay, merci yes, thank you to... very much. To... Let me the opportunity to speak in Madagascar. People have access to sanitation, 11% um, about. So those are the numbers that have been made public by the state regarding the sector. Our organization has worked a lot to make sure that people who do not have a voice are heard, women, vulnerable persons, and we have put in place an organization to make that possible. The first point is to empower those vulnerable groups, poor women, women coming from poor neighborhoods, and some people come, some women also come from rural areas. So this is our public. We've been focusing on them. And regarding accountability, we have worked on integrating those groups in the different platforms, in the different dialogue forums that we had in our municipalities. Because at the national level, we do not yet have a consultation uh, dialogue at the political level. But at the national political level, only big associations are involved, big institutions working in the sector, the Bush sector. The government and the ministries have contact with us. Uh, a month ago, once we defined the policy, we insisted in involving vulnerable groups in the discussions because water and sanitation is a fundamental point regarding human rights. On the basis of those activities, we've been able to introduce at the groups, be it disabled people, women, young girls, poor people, um, to make sure that they are involved and can participate. And then we have an initiative to improve uh, the wash sector in Madagascar And this is being funded. This initiative is being funded. And regarding track theme, we have underlined that it is important to make sure that the contribution of Madagascar's funding concerning women, disabled people, um, that this is being tracked. And we've also been working on training with women. And we've always um, insisted on, on that. In three regions, we have women groups that are supported by our organization, OSEA, and in the future, people will be able to participate in the dialogue. Before these women groups were not organized, they were angry, frustrated. And when you're angry, frustrated, and not organized, nobody listens to, new, to you, nobody can help you, nobody can support you. So we needed to make sure that there is a strong organization 
to make sure that those vulnerable groups are heard. Um, we see that there is a will, but the lack of capacity is the main uh, bottleneck, the main obstacle uh, when it comes to making the voices of those groups heard. And that's why we needed to empower them to make sure that they participate in the different uh, dialogue forums. Um, regarding our activity, we have made sure that good practices are highlighted in the WASH sector in order to support uh, government's actions, measures regarding uh, SWA, uh, WASH, and the SDG uh, 6.2. Thank you very so much. We I've have highlighted good yeah. practices. Um, okay. I think what's coming out very clearly from Afsen's reflections on the learning is the power of empowerment that the project gave voice and agency to the women, and not just the women, but the vulnerable groups. And this is very important. And also something that I've also picked up from his sharing is the issue of directly influencing Trackfin. Trackfin is a, a process that is, uh, ha has been funded by the World Health Organization for different countries to track finances. That's why it is called Trackfin to track finances. But what Arsene is raising is the, the focus on vulnerable groups has to be integrated in the track thing. That's a very interesting aspect. Now, we will now hear from a different speaker as well on their reflections, and we'll go to Joshua, and I'll be asking her a question. Dr. Joshua, this is a question for you. We are that your organization works with people living with disability. What challenges do non-WASH actors face in bringing in different voices to the WASH debate? Joshua? Did we, meet, did we lose her? Okay, as we wait for Joshua, we can ask the next question. Let's go to Yunia. Yunia, this is for you. In your project, we know you did a rapid assessment on the extent of exclusion of the marginalized populations when it comes to sanitation and MHH and, and menstrual hygiene in Uganda. Share with us at least two recommendations for successful civil society strengthening of voice and mutual accountability to promote inclusion. I'm sure the, 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 the assessment that you did may have come up with recommendations. Also considering that you, have, you are a seasoned civil society person with a very big umbrella organization of more than 200 agencies, so what are the recommendations that are coming out from the rapid assessment that you did that would strengthen the voice and mutual accountability to ensure that no one is left behind? Please, Yunia. Yunia, we are missing you. Did we also lose Yunia? It seems like we're having internet challenges with our um, discussants. Is Martin available? Martin? Martin? Yes, I am, Liz. Great. I, I, Fantastic. I so then I can ask you your question, then you're able to reflect with us and on your thoughts. So Martin, Absolutely. we are aware that you lead a youth organization. So you work with youth. So why is it important to create space and bring in youth as part of building mutual accountability? 
And when you, are, you, when you are reflecting on that, please let us also know what you think can be done within the WASH sector to support youth voices so that they are also at the table where we have the, the WASH discourse. Please, Martin. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Liz, for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, the council. Thank you, Swa, and thank you, Anu, for this uh, wonderful opportunity and platform that you have created for us to uh, share the important lessons we are drawing uh, from the different work that we are doing with support from uh, uh, the council. <clears throat> um, just to answer the question that you have um, asked me, what's, wh why is it important to have young people uh, part of the conversation uh, on, 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 uh, with, 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 in as far as uh, mutual accountability is concerned, voice and mutual accountability is concerned, and what can we do to support their participation? Um, I think uh, much has been talked about young people being the leaders of the future. Um, uh, that is very true, but also we, we, we are more and more uh, beginning to appreciate the fact that young people are leaders of today as well. And, and, and so having young people part of the conversation today is an opportunity to have um, to enhance sustainability, um, both for today and tomorrow, uh, for the different interventions that, uh, that, 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 that are taking place, but also um, uh, and this is, is something that that uh, that, that we uh, at African youth development link together with the, with, with our partners as we as we went about implementing the project we we, 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 we got to affirm more and more the fact that um, young people actually uh, are affected by the issue of wash uh, by water uh, sanitation uh, and hygiene. And and, 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 and and yet it is something that they that we, we, we rarely do pay attention to. And so bringing young people closer to the conversation helps us to appreciate the value of what as a sector in our lives and in our daily lives, but also in the in the work that we do and and, and, and how this cross cuts in, in the other uh, you know in the other thematic areas that we 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 we, 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 we address and so um, it, 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 it is an opportunity, you know, including young people in the conversation is an opportunity for them to get to appreciate uh, WASH as, as, as a critical sector in the lives of young people, because many a time we look at it as something that is a by the way, something that, you know, it, it, it should be a concern of, of the older generation. And so uh, I believe having uh, young people, you know, uh, part of the conversation is important because of that. But also, I think it is important to have young people part of this space uh, so that we can, the sector can also be uh, able to benefit from the energy, from the enthusiasm, from the commitment and tenacity that is often associated with young people. Uh, the, the, the excitement that, that, that young people bring to each and every space that they come to, I think that is, a, 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 potential that, we, that, that, that the watch sector can do well with tapping into uh, if, if, if we are going to have uh, far-reaching uh, aspects. Um, and then how can we help? Um, I, 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 I'm, going to, I'm, I'm going to do this, uh, I'm going to, to answer that in a, in a twofold manner. I'm going to answer that in, in a way from the, from the point that how can other actors within the within the watch sector help young people uh, to, to participate, but also how can young people themselves help themselves to uh, you, you know uh, get into this space and maximize it? And, and now uh, just to begin with, um, just to begin with, with, with their actors, I think young people do because, like I mentioned, that this is a sector that we we haven't really been keen on, but yet is a critical one to our lives. Um, I think we can do, as young people can do good with mentorship. I think uh, that, 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 that is an area uh, the, 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 the mainstream actors within the watch sector can really uh, help young people uh, in terms of mentorship, mentorship in leadership, mentorship in, 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 in you know, uh, mentoring young people to take leadership in 
uh, these spaces, but also um, uh, I, I, I probably in line with, with, with the as aspects of mentorship, I think young people need, we need awareness. Because like I mentioned, that um, young people are not aware, for example, that this is, is, is uh, that, that, that wash is, is a critical issue, you know, not only to, to, to their lives, but to, to, to the lives of those around them. And, and, and I think creating more and more awareness um, among us young people on the value of, 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 of their participation, or the value of, of, of the sector as it is, but also why they need to participate in this sector, I think it, it, it is important. And then uh, skilling young people, you know, uh, giving them the, 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 it is important to skill them through training, uh, 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 skilling them with, with both the, the, the the the, the 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 knowledge but also this the, the soft skills that they need uh, to be able to effectively participate in uh mutual i mean voice and mutual accountability uh processes and and, Thank uh, you so uh, much, and maybe <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> thank you so much allow me to pick up on something you have said it may yes. sound like you're saying the sanitation sector is boring and not vibrant well, we will take it positively and say we, we need to get in more youth so that we are more. No, vibrant. I did not. <laughs> but that's okay. I did. Now, you have challenged yes. us actually. The the, the yes. thing you have actually challenged us with is that for us to speak sustainability, we need to involve the youth. If we are saying the youth are the leaders of tomorrow, what are we doing today to make sure that they are the leaders of tomorrow and sensitive to the issues we are fighting about today? Thank you very much for Absolutely. your Absolutely and your reflections, Martin. Thank you so much. Pleasure is mine. So, we will try and find Joshua. Joshua, are you back? Joshua, are you there now? Uh-huh. You near? Uh, Joshua, it's Elvir. Ah, okay. um, it's not Joshua, it's Elvir. Uh, it's it's Vero, El Vero, Vero. Ah, it's I'm Vero. Vero. Okay, fantastic. Vero, here is my question to you. We are the organization works. We are here that your organization works with people living with disabilities. Travail avec des personnes handicapées, n'est-ce pas? Oui. Do non wash actors Faced in bringing in different voices to the wash debate. Did you get the question? Uh, oui. Uh, bonjour à toutes et à tous. Uh, je m'appelle Vero. Yes. Uh, parfois, je suis l'assistant oh. de Joshua. Parce... I'm sometimes the assistant of Joshua because Joshua is a blind person. Mais je suis aussi, uh, but I also responsible for communication, the platform of the association of um, disabled people, persons in Madagascar. Concerning the WSSCC's uh, uh, funded project, Joshua and I uh, work on that. And regarding to your question, uh, the challenge, the challenge is to convince authorities and the different decision makers that they should, within their budget line, specify uh, that there should be infrastructures for uh, disabled persons. An example, um, if infrastructures um, do not make it possible for disabled people to have access to those infrastructures, they will not be able to use the services related to water, sanitation and hygiene. We also need to make sure that we have low uh, texts on the access 
for disabled people. So decision makers do take decision to make access possible for disabled people, but uh, the implementation doesn't follow the standards are not there. So we think that there should be low text regarding the standards and the norms um, related to the access uh, of those infrastructures for disabled people. So uh, um, is it enough regarding the, the challenges? Do you hear me? Merci. Merci, Vero. Now, Vero has raised a very critical issue about budgetary inclusion for infrastructure adjustment. Most times, most programs just implement without considerations. And whatever is happening in Madagascar is critical. And we want to thank you, Vero, for sharing with us about this infrastructure adjustment and also ensuring that standards are adhered, mm -hmm. that they actually serve the accessibility. Yes, for accessibility for the vulnerable. Thank you very much, Vero, for that contribution. Uh, we now go to Emil. Emil, are you there? Yes, I can see you are there. We, 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 good. Yes, I'm here. A question for you. A question for you. For this project, you focused on coordinated community level advocacy. What lessons have you learned about strengthening voice and accountability at different levels and bridging the community and national divide around advocacy and accountability? What are the lessons that have emerged from your project, Emil, to you? Okay. Merci beaucoup. Uh, merci à WSC de nous avoir associé à cette uh, plateforme. To have um, included me within this platform. Et je dirais que nous avons conduit un projet sur six mois qui a mis un ensemble particulier sur le niveau local. For the, the council. Um, Today, we try to make sure that um, people better understand each other. And first of all, I need to talk about the Togo context. In 2019, after 30 years, uh, there was the possibility for municipalities um, to take more space. There are seven um, territories in the countries. We have been working on an organization um, working with the wash sector to make sure that uh, local governments were heard regarding questions um, uh, touching upon the, the, the wash sector. We are very proud to see that the fund has been catal catalytic because the grant we got during those six months month has made it possible for uh, the network to be visible um, towards uh, the government, to make sure that local governments are visible. And we now get a coalition through the coalition. It is being implemented at the moment. And the objective is to have a study, a monitoring study, to see what part of the budget is given to the seven municipalities regarding the wash sector and talk about tariffs, the price of water for vulnerable populations. 
at the same time this funding has given us legitimacy in the local government it's not only money it shows that our organization is funded by a partner from a high level um, from, from a high level partner so it gives us a, a, an important legitimacy so from this funding we've been able to harmonize the tools to collect data and to work more on um, advocacy uh, we have data online and the member of our organization uh, have access to that and at the same time we have an advocacy guide for the wash sector that has been published a simple guide for the member to make sure that advocacy is made to facilitate advocacy in in the sector and thanks to that funding we've uh, started working with universities and we have been trusted because of this funded so if you do not have the university with you and academics with you it is difficult to influence the sector another important point that we want to share with you is that those initiatives give us a tool an easy tool that can be adapted for example we've been able to support some local communities so that they could find other partners to start a project together and beyond the project those communities have been able to find a co-funding um, so 10 percent of the investing budget has made it possible for, for them to find other fundings for, for their um, mutual projects so those are some of the elements i wanted to share with you and let us thank not forget the fact oh sorry thank you very much for sharing that very critical issues are coming out that it's just not us receiving money and doing work out there but also that the money that uh, in this case togo received also helped them with their legitimacy to local government because local government realized who they were and also it also helped them and their members on understanding the budgetary process and supporting the community to have that divide of the national the communal to national level engagement when it comes to budgetary processes we all know that budgetary processes are not easy but the fact that we engage as civil society organizations to support our our communities to understand what it means it's very critical and also it contributes big time for mutual accountability as well thank you very much emil for that uh, now we will go to unia uh, first and foremost please allow me i realize we have four minutes to three o'clock we were supposed to stop at three o'clock that's geneva time but we'll be overshot a bit so please allow us bear with us we will have uh, the last discussant who is uh, unia from uganda and then we will hold you for maybe another 10 minutes to just uh, have a closing session whereby we only promise to take 10 minutes of your time so please bear with us and do not leave so unia i will come to you now unia are you there i'm here excellent thank you so here's your question unia in your project, you did a rapid assessment on the extent of exclusion of marginalized populations, what they face when it comes to sanitation and menstrual health in Uganda. 
So please share with us at least two recommendations that came out of that assessment for a successful civil society strengthening of voice and mutual accountability to ensure that we promote inclusion. Okay. Thank you. Your connection is very bad, Yunia. We can't hear you. Beth, um, good morning, the afternoon, because my network is not really good. Yes. Now we can hear is you. Is this better? Proceed. Yes, proceed. Okay. Yeah, that's why. Okay, excuse me, I've put, I've put off the video, so the network can be better. Yes. Yes, as you've alluded, Elizabeth, we did undertake a rapid assessment to try and understand. We use this opportunity um, to try and assess specifically uh, who are the unserved regards sanitation hygiene and menstrual hygiene management and what are the factors leading to that. And like you've requested, from this assessment, the two main recommendations that came up. First of all, we tried to beef this assessment with another component that we know um, that we hope to beef up the findings and the recommendations. We also undertook um, a budget analysis where currently, just um, early this year, mid this year, the government of Uganda launched the, the National Development Plan 3, which in many countries, I think it happens, it helps to guide the government priorities for the next couple of years, either five or 10 years or 20. So it was just launched um, in, um, in um, February this year. So we took up this opportunity to assess how uh, sanitation, issues of sanitation hygiene and We have lost you, Yunia. Mid to this subsector. Sorry, sorry, Yunia, we have lost you in the past like 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, it's the basis of this that the budget allocations um, are made to the subsector. So the findings of this, they help to beef up with the other factors, you know, uh, that were highlighted that lead to penalized groups not to have access to sanitation and hygiene that include uh, the location, poverty, you know, people with disability, just like many different um, equity, equity and inclusion sense and lenses. We need to, as civil society, we need to, uh, to, to pass on the assessments done uh, for the civil society organizations to understand the underprioritization of this subsector within the national policies that include the national development plan. And one of the key findings is, um, it leads us to other examples where like, for instance, Kenya is, where you find that um, sanitation and hygiene is, you know, cross-cutting across different, different line ministries. And this time, in spite of, um, you know, the usual, the usual ones are the Minister of Water and Environment, Minister of Education in charge of education, Minister of Health in charge of household. But also in Uganda, and I think other countries, you find that the Minister of Gender and Development, which is in charge of women issues, are lagging behind regards wash and gender. So this gave us an opportunity to highlight this, and they were involved in the dissemination, and um, the engagement was really good. So it will be one of our key areas where we're going to move on with engaging with all these key other stakeholders. And also, not only for budget allocation, but also um, currently you find that um, when it comes to the annual reporting, Uganda, we are far in terms of fulfilling, fulfilling, the, fulfilling the mom, in terms of sector performance monitoring. But one key component that's missing is the assessment and targets for menstrual hygiene management. So one key recommendation is that we're going to move on to engage with all these um, line ministries to make sure that issues of sanitation hygiene and menstrual hygiene management are well, um, um, well prioritized in their plans, budgets, and 
targets and performance measurement frameworks. Then secondly, because this um, catalyst funding was to steer, you know, and promote civil society advocacy, uh, from this assessment that we did of the budgets regards this subsector, it gave us a good foundation going forward. We now have key messages. We have key messages of the assessment which was done when the marginalized, and this is quite also well linked to our commitment to the sanitation and water for all as a network, where we committed um, to try and identify who are the unserved within the sector. So the policy brief that we generated from this rapid assessment is highlighting who are the, who are the unserved and what are the factors leading to that and what can civil society do about this, especially regards budget advocacy, monitoring, you know, and this is right from district where, um, where you find that, um, you know, um, civil society engagement at district level is minimal. You know, many of them move in, they provide the services, but yet their mandate is beyond service provision. One of our key mandates is promoting accountability, being a watchdog and all. So once you, we equip them with this information, we hope that they're going to do it very well. And also, some of you may be aware, we are having, we are currently in our election period. We hope to have a new cabinet uh, next year and members of parliament. So it's this same information that we hope to use to equip um, our engagement with parliamentarians to foster this dialogue at national level. Okay. Thank you so much, Yunia. Thank you. Well spoken. Thank you so much. One of the things I'd like to pick up from your presentation that, is, that has cut across all the discussions we've had in this session is the, is the magic that comes out of a multi-stakeholder engagement. Every voice counts. And clearly from also from Unia's presentation and the others, evidence-based approaches also work magic. So I think we, we agree from all these presentations that mutual accountability is just not something out there, but it is something that we live with, we work towards, we work for, but most importantly is Every, every voice counts, whether it's for the vulnerable groups, whether it's for the elderly, whether it's people living with disability, whether it's disadvantaged women, or it's children, or the youth, all these people count, whether it is private sector, whether it is the different ministries in government, all their voices count. And we as civil society have a responsibility to bring them around the table. We, the civil society, have the responsibility to create that table to create that platform, whether it is virtual, like what we are doing today, whether it is physical, it's our responsibility. For example, the joint sector reviews we've had of, the different sanitation weeks and journeys we've had of, that we are able to learn from each other and also just give others space to speak. Because in that speaking, we, we are able to build that mutual platform whereby the next natural step would be accountability for us to be able to achieve the mutual accountability we are aiming for. And I would like to thank my, uh, my panel discussants. Thank you so much for your time and for your reflections and your, your contributions. And also thank you for the previous presenters from the, from the different countries as well, who contributed towards uh, this session as well. And at, that, at this point in time, please allow me to hand over the session back to Keridwe. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, Liz. Thank you very much. Um, actually, I think we just want to, to now wrap up. I want to thank Liz for her excellent moderation and really uh, keeping everything on time, but more to the point, uh, really summarizing the presentations and the other inputs so well, making the links, uh, bringing the conclusions and, and connecting the dots, let's say. Um, so I'm not actually going to make uh, closing remarks um i'd like to invite actually um i wanted to invite somebody from irc um irma i know is isn't here with us but we do have ellen walter from um irc who was very very instrumental in the watershed program we don't have much time um so really just 
uh, one minute, just your reflections on what you've heard and really ideas for the future. How can we as sector partners uh, take responsibility and support um, the civil society um, and other stakeholders to, to keep this work going in the future? So just really quick reflections from you, please, Ellen. Then we'll hear from our SWA colleagues. And of course, to wrap up uh, will be Sareen. Thank you. Over to you, Ellen. Great. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, this was great. It was really exciting to hear all of the, the cases and examples of the progress that has been made around mutual accountability, but still with an identification of where um, we can, we need to build. Um, I just, there were two things I think that I wanted to point out um, in my 60 seconds. Um, one is around the resources that are needed. Um, I think that's a really important, it's, it's important to invest um, in these processes and thinking, so I have a couple of ideas um, about how we can do that. Um, one is um, to think about the, uh, these as standalone projects um, and programs versus integration into current and future programs and how we can find a balance between those so that even if um, resources are small, there's still things that investments um, in the work that can be made. Also thinking about partnership for pooled resources um, and collective proposals for support. Um, so how we can be building kind of that collective um, voice even stronger. Um, and, the, and to look into new and different um, types of uh, resources. So um, who is interested in governance but may not be interested in WASH um, and how we can um, look into tapping into new and different resources for more sustainable um, advocacy, influencing um, and accountability approaches. And then the last thing is to just maintain the momentum. Um, there's a lot, clearly, a lot of momentum that's that's happening um, and we don't want to lose that. So tapping into and taking advantage of opportunities when there is um, uh, opportunities for policy reviews and taking advantage, but also um, maintaining those skills and, and that awareness of what's happening um, around so that you, all of us are kind of armed and ready to respond when those opportunities arise. So there's a lot more I could say. I've put um, a couple of resources around Watershed um, in the chat, but this was really great and I just wanted to thank everybody for their content. So thanks again and look forward to continued discussions. Thank you so much, Ellen. And I would encourage you all to look at the chat because there's a rich discussion happening there in parallel. Um, and now, uh, Nampi and Eloise, let's hear a couple uh, minute each from you both, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, everyone. So Eloise here. No, I, I think I wanted to stress. Um, so we've seen in this in this webinar that the sustainable development goals are unique in the sense that they ask for all actors to play a part to support governments in fulfilling the goals. And we've stressed over and over again the importance of CSOs. I like what Liz said to be the broker of the, the voice on, on the ground to policymakers and offering that table or at least working with governments to create a, a round table with where all the voices are there. Um, and we've seen that the mutual accountability mechanism of SWA is a strong tool for allowing all stakers, stakeholders to be around that table. Um, and I would really encourage that we, we build on, on this MAM, on this mutual accountability mechanism, and we try to bring all those voices around the table with government leadership. But, and I think what, what um, um, we've said also is, is a major challenge is even though CSOs are crucial, there is um, several reports coming from bonds, civicists, but even we've heard today the challenges for CSOs to fund and to have the capacity on the long term to sustain that voice um, and to really get funding and financing to engage in WASH um, advocacy activities. We know that there is um, more and more restricted spaces for civil uh, civic participation. Um, the funding uh, linked to COVID, for example, is not necessarily uh, going to increase for advocacy and there are some stresses and reports saying that it might actually decrease for long-term advocacy. So I think my, my call and, and Nampi will add is that we need to continue working with you, but also with donors, external support agencies, governments and, 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 and private sector as well in making sure that they see a value in the mutual accountability 
accountability mechanism in multi-stakeholder platforms and that they also see the value in funding and supporting the CSO voice around, um, around that table. Um, so really trying for SWA and others to, to build on what we've done um, this year and make the case um, for funding and capacity building of CSOs on the long term um, using the MAM as a way um, to come and commit um, to supporting CSOs voice. Maybe I'll let Nampi add. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Caridwin. Thank you, Eloise. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed. Uh, a lot of impressive experiences have been shared by different CSOs networks, of course. And SOA is indeed delighted to have WSSCC as a partner with stepped up as part of their commitment to support the multi-stakeholder uh, platforms and CSOs engagement in our different partner countries in Africa. As it has been said, the council supported the CSO networks by uh, providing what Kerridwin called it, the catalyt catalytic funding and as well as technical support. And the MAM, as everybody would, would, be, would know by now that MAM means mutual accountability mechanism, is a great tool, as Eloise has said that, uh, for allowing for each actor to act together to achieve the SDGs. A lot has been said about mutual accountability mechanisms or even accountability in, in sector. This tool can also be used to strengthen commitment from donors, external support agencies, international NGOs, foundations, and others to support the voice of the CSOs around the table is very essential. I therefore want to call on all actors to set up the effort to do so, learning from extremely valuable experiences developed this year. So as SWA, in the coming year, we will be strengthening our partnership with governments and partners to mainly focus on promoting multi-stakeholder approaches. The mom, uh, the, the mom, and to try to open spaces for CSO's engagement. Therefore, we invite you all to work closely with us to make that possible based on the good practices shared today and to try to extend this learning to other parts of the world. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much, Eloise and Nompi. Uh, I, just before I hand over to, to Sarin, and you may mention this, uh, please all do look at the chat. And Sumi from uh, the Susanna Africa chapter has just shared a link. Uh, if you're not already signed up, it's a very, very new chapter. Uh, again, supported by WSSCC, just the startup. Uh, we really hope this learning and exchange uh, platform uh, of Susanna. Uh, is something that you'll all sign up to, that you'll use. Uh, and there is a thread on this very topic. And we really hope you can continue the conversation, join the conversation, ask more questions, share and learn through, through that. So that's a plug for Susanna. Uh, please go into the chat and follow that link and tell others um, so we can maybe really make that a vibrant uh, chapter uh, on sharing and learning. So thanks to everybody. And I hand over to Sarin for closing, thank you. Thank you very much, Keridun, for plugging that uh, the Susanna chapter for us. Um, I won't take long. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth, uh, for the excellent moderation, Keridun, Eloise, uh, for supporting in the preparation of this uh, webinar. And thank you to all our panelists and members that have attended. As mentioned, we it doesn't end here. We're really glad to see that, uh, yes, that this catalytic funding has really supported civil society organizations to strengthen their, 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 their hold and their space within the sector. And as a new, we do commit to continuing this work with you. Um, as mentioned, taking leadership as well in terms of the mobilization of civil society moving forward and continuing with all the tools and the resources that have been provided for us, particularly in the year 2020 by our various partners and uh, members. Um, as mentioned, the main output from this uh, discussion is of course will be found on the Susanna chapter and the development of the e-publication. If there is a need by members or who feel that maybe a position paper should be developed or a call to action should be developed, we are more than happy to support that process. 
on that note, thank you very much, WSCC. Thank you very much, uh, SWA. Thank you very much to all the members and partners over here, IRC and the Watershed Program. And um, we shall go on. We shall continue. Thank you.